Hey guys, Ambience here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to beat FNAF 1 Night 5 on FNAF VR Help Wanted. As the Blacklight Challenge for FNAF 1, this night is quite difficult as you might expect. It's actually considered by some to be the hardest challenge in the entire game, and while I wouldn't go quite that far, it's still fairly daunting and a big step up from the normal nights for sure. Thankfully, it's still very manageable as long as you know what to do. First things first, I'll be assuming that if you've gotten this far, then you probably already know the basics. If you'd like a refresher, feel free to check out the last two guides covering this mode, that should bring you up to speed pretty fast. Got it all down? Great, let's carry on then. The main reason why this night is considered difficult, aside from animatronics being more aggressive of course, is the tight power, darker setting, and players having a tendency to get confused on who to prioritize at any given time. If you can conquer that, you're all set, and this guide will aim to teach you all of that in as short of a time as possible. Let's hop into the night. Just so you know, I decided to switch back into VR for this night for a few reasons. First, I'm just generally more comfortable in it, I'm a lot more used to moving around the virtual space than I am playing in flat mode. Second, I want to show you some tricks that you can use in VR, and third, it actually provides a substantial advantage. It's much easier to see Bonnie and Chica in complete darkness, you can check when they're in the holes without using the cameras, and more. Don't worry, I'll give you a strategy for both styles of play, but VR is the most optimal here. First of all, keep the camera set to 1A and lock it there until Freddy moves. I wasn't able to hear sound while recording this session, but I highly recommend that you make sure that you can. It makes tracking Freddy a lot easier. Anyway, wait until Freddy laughs, then immediately switch over to 1B. The goal of this strategy is to stall Freddy for as long as possible and save power in the process. He'll be your main focus for this night. I know it's tempting to watch Foxy, but it's actually not really necessary. Watching him barely slows him down, and I'll tell you when he gets ready to run. Take note of these timings, and you'll be able to keep an eye on Freddy all night and save a crazy amount of power. We'll get to Foxy in just a minute. For now, let's talk about Bonnie and Chica. You'll see them moving around on 1A and 1B while watching those cameras, and that should allow you to keep an eye on them for a little while. If you know where one of them is, then you obviously don't need to check the respective light, but otherwise, you should stick to checking the door lights every 10 to 15 seconds. Maybe even 15 to 20 if you want to save a bit more power. I know that sounds risky, especially since I've said to check them more often on earlier nights, but power is pretty tight here and holding off for just a few extra seconds can make a big difference. Checking the lights a lot in the early nights was mainly just for peace of mind, allowing you to be a bit less nervous while still having plenty of power, but here you want to have the best possible chance of winning and be able to get comfortable in the dark. If you don't mind me getting technical for a minute, all of the animatronics movement intervals are every 16 seconds, and they don't change no matter the night they just become more likely to secede their intervals. As such, even if they teleport right to your door, you can get away with waiting longer than you think. As you track Freddy across the building, you may also be able to see Bonnie or Chica from time to time, so take note of that and stop checking the light until they leave that camera. While we're on the topic of lights, welcome to Night 5's gimmick. Every now and then, a door will close twice, then the light will turn on. This is actually not as dangerous as you might think, since it can't happen while Foxy or Freddy are close. On this patch, anyway, apparently that somehow got through QA testing initially, and Foxy could just sometimes get into your office whenever he felt like it. When this happens, just get ready to turn off the light as soon as it turns itself on, you don't want to waste any power. Anyway, Bonnie and Chica should be fairly simple overall. Check the lights as infrequently as you can get away with, but remember to check them on time and be ready to shut the door if you need to. If you hear footsteps, be a bit more cautious and prioritize checking the lights above all else. If your brightness is high enough, or if you're in VR, you might be able to see them at the doors even without the lights, but I wouldn't recommend relying on this unless you know for a fact that you can do it. If you're on flat mode, you'll probably want to stick to just checking the lights. Every 10-15 to 15 seconds won't drain your power too much anyway, so don't worry. Once you close the door on Bonnie or Chica, they'll probably go away on their next interval, so you could just wait 16 seconds to guarantee it, but it's probably best to know exactly when they leave. Again, if you're in VR, you can probably see Chica in the dark, or lean over to the window to look outside of the door for Bonnie. Otherwise, you can just flick on the right light for a split second to see if Chica's still at the window, or look for part of Bonnie's shadow on the far wall in the west hallway. If you can't see the shadow, you could always open the door for a second with the light on to see if he's there, but this is obviously a bit risky. 
If you can't find a consistent way of knowing if Bonnie's gone, then you may just want to wait until the interval passes. That's about it for Bonnie and Chica. Just check the lights consistently without wasting too much power, open the door as quickly as you can after they leave, and hold off on checking the light if you spot them on the cameras. They're pretty simple to deal with, especially with this much past experience, so now it's time to move on to the main threats, Freddy and Foxy. Freddy, put simply, is a vacuum that exists to drain either your time or your power. Maybe that's what was really stuffed into him, as opposed to a child, a giant vacuum. Wonder where I have to get a hold of that. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Where were we? Uh, right, time or power. So, unlike the original FNAF one, there's no way to get rid of Freddy once he arrives at your door. You just have to keep the right door shut for the entire night once he gets there. This obviously isn't the greatest thing, since you'll be on at least two bars of usage for the rest of the night. That may not sound like a lot, but trust me, it's a lot more than you think. Now, you can't prevent Freddy from getting to your door entirely, but you can make him arrive around 4am as opposed to 2am, so that's nice. Unfortunately, that comes with a price too, since you won't be able to watch Foxy while you're making sure Freddy doesn't end your run early. Don't worry though, like I said, I've got timers. Last thing about Freddy, once he does get the Cam 4B, don't panic and wait him out a little bit longer. Unlike the original FNAF 1, he actually stops directly outside your door after leaving 4B, so you can wait until he gets there, then wait another 10 to 15 seconds if you're feeling really ballsy. Not any longer though, shut the door in his face before he's been there for 16 seconds or you'll get quite an unwanted bear hug. After that, keep it shut for the rest of the night and stop paying attention to Chica as well since the door is closed. Just focus on Bonnie and Foxy. Speaking of Foxy, assuming you're not playing half bad, you'll have to deal with him long before Freddy gets to your door. He typically runs twice this night, so you'll want to be prepared for both and switch to him around these time frames or a little before if you want to play it safe. If you're using most of the strategies mentioned here, then you should have decent power anyway, so you can afford to be a few seconds off. His first run will be near the start of 2 a.m., so switch to Pirate's Cove as soon as it hits 2, or maybe a little before if you feel like the hour is just about to turn over. Either way, he'll probably be standing outside of the curtains already. Keep an eye on him until he disappears from the camera, then shut the left door and wait for him to run down the hall. Remember, this isn't the old FNAF 1, so don't open the door while he's still knocking. Apparently, Scott Coffin remembered that foxes typically don't randomly vanish from space and time about 5 years too late. Wait until the scratching stops, don't open the door in his face. For good measure, you should probably actually wait a second or two extra, just in case Foxy bugs out and kills you after his noise seems to have ended, because that can happen sometimes. After the first Foxy attack, open your door back up, keep checking for Bonnie and Chica, and you should be alright. Oh, and make sure to switch back to wherever Freddy's at as soon as Foxy leaves the cove, you can't afford to waste much time here. If he laughs while you're looking at Foxy, take note of his pattern and move one camera ahead. Remember, his pattern is 1A, 1B, 7, 6, 4A, 4B, and then your door. Anyway, you should have some downtime between your first and second Foxy attack, so just keep focused on Freddy and check the doors when you can, every 10 to 15 seconds on average. Quick tip also, if you're in VR, you can actually see Bonnie and Chica, or even Freddy for that matter, in the corners without using the cameras. While leaning out of the office will spawn Foxy, you can still get an angle by moving close to one of the windows and tilting your head just enough where you can see their arms in the corners. This can really help if you're not sure if they're close even though you just heard footsteps recently. Just be prepared for one of them to pop up right in front of your face and close the door if they do. However, if you're playing in flat mode, then uh, my condolences, I guess. Okay, last hurdle of the night now. Second Foxy attack. Freddy should be arriving at your door around 4am if you did a pretty good job of watching him, so you should just be able to focus on Foxy fully once he gets close. Switch to the cove and be ready to close the left door. Sometimes Foxy likes to barrel down the hole instantly after leaving and that leaves you with a very small window to react, so feel free to just shut the door early and lean out of it to trigger him intentionally. As long as it's 4am and you stay focused on the cove for the rest of the night, the chance of him running again is practically zero. He tends to run at late 4am, but RNG happens and life sucks, so he might run closer to the middle of the hour sometimes. Be prepared either way. If you have to lose a few seconds with Freddy, then so be it. Anyway, open the door after you're sure that he's gone, keep checking for Bonnie, and you can pretty much just turn your brain off for the rest of the night. If you followed the strat and played carefully, you should have saved enough power to survive. Congrats on completing the week! 
If you did run out of power, you can still win, but Freddy doesn't tend to be very forgiving, so it's best to focus on saving as much as you can at any point in the night. Well, that's all for now. Follow this strategy and you should be able to beat the fifth and final night of the first mode. If you've completed some other modes and help wanted already, do you think this really is the hardest challenge in the game or does it look a little weak compared to some other things? Let me know in the comments. Speaking of which, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or to join my community Discord server. By joining the Discord server, you can get personalized tips on any FNAF game for myself, True Player, Shooter25, and a bunch of other FNAF experts and content creators. It's a great community and I highly recommend joining. Even if you don't need help with something, there's some pretty cool people to hang out with. If you'd like updates on all upcoming content and whatever else I'm doing at the moment, be sure to follow me on Twitter too. We're growing a pretty decent community there and it's been great to see. Once again, thanks to my good friend Bonnie360 for making the great thumbnail for this guide. He's been putting in crazy work to help supply me with thumbnails for free the past few months. He's really outstanding and he's super good at FNAF 2 with some great completions of max modes. His channel is linked in the description and cards, so go support him. While we're on the topic of friends who helped make this video possible, also go check out Insta. He's an absolutely insane help wanted player and the best guy to get advice on it from. He put in quite a bit of research to help make this video accurate, mostly with Foxy and on the technical side of things. He's also linked in the description and cards. Check him out and drop a subscription if you want. And as you may have noticed, this video was somewhat of a production nightmare and took forever to come out, and it probably would have taken even longer without my good pal Acro, who helped write the script. You know the drill, he's linked right now. In case you couldn't tell, yeah, this was a team effort. Anyway, like I just said, this took forever to release, but I'll hopefully be back on a somewhat normal upload schedule now. I know I've said that the last few guides, but hey, maybe third time's the charm. Maybe I'll put the Help Wanted guides on hold for a week or two and dive into some fanverse material early. I don't know. Either way, thanks for being so patient while this was in the works. Hopefully I'll be able to give you guys a show worth watching again soon. With that being said, thank you guys for watching this guide. I hope it helped you, and I will see you in the next one.